I will present now. Oh, I'm gonna do a window, I'm gonna regret that. Okay. Look at this complicated thing that you have there, Vicki, where I could just order something on Amazon and rub it with a stick and I don't have to make anything. <laughs> All right, I got the link to the slides. I'm going to put it in here if you want it. And what I have done is on the slides, I've done file published to the web where I'm looking at the published version because this way I can see the grid in Google Meet. Let me do a full screen share on this. I'm gonna stop presenting. I have a giant screen, and I think that John Cripo is right that if we're asking teachers to do remote learning, we should at least get them a bigger screen. So what you'll see is I'm able to do with my giant screen, I can see a grid of you, and whoa, I didn't mean to do that. And then I can have what I'm doing over here on the side, so I can do both. I can see the chat, I can see everybody, I can see the screen, but on when I'm on my Mac, when I'm on the little one, then, then I can't do this. I can't demo my slides and do whatever and right or have an yes have an extra monitor right that's exactly it okay so anywho's we are going to create a badge game with a choice board and where we are going to start is we're going to try it out so if you will go to alicekeelcom slash search drive So this is something I made with the template. It's an old example. I've added some more features to the template since I've made this, but it's still pretty good. And then you don't have to make another one. <laughs> and it gives you an idea. Now there's lots of ways to make a choice board. You don't have to do this one. Um, this one's gamified and it uses Google Sheets. So why would you not want to use it? Because that sounds awesome. Alicekeeler.com slash search drive. Okay. And I'm going to make a copy. Wait, I don't, am I still screen sharing like the whole screen? Yeah, probably am. Let's just do the window. That would be better. Okie dokie. So you should get something like this. It says you're level one with zero badges. So the first thing I want you to do is to just go through, and if you already know it, just a freebie, you already know it, check it off. And you'll notice when you check it off, you get a little badge. And now I'm level two with four badges. So go ahead and go through the list and see what kind of search ninja you are while I go get some hot tea. Right. Beginning. All right, how are we doing? Now, what I'd like you to do, if there's something you don't know how to do, you'll see I have, it says click here. And because you're in edit mode, it doesn't go straight to open it. So you have to click on the link 
and it opens that website where I give you a tutorial or some help. It might go to a YouTube video. Um, here we go. Or it might go to a Google Slide. So one of the things I do for each game is I create one Google Slides and I put all my tutorials in the one Google Slides. Because do you notice this opened up to page six? So I've got actually all of, not all the challenges, because some of them link to other web pages or a YouTube video or something. But I have, wherever I'm doing my tutorials, I've got them on the slides. And then whatever slide I'm on, if I copy the link, this is the link to this slide. So I'm able to hyperlink that back in my spreadsheet so I can make all my tutorials in one place, which is really, really fun. And then the students have all the slides of everything I want them to know, and they can explore them, but I can link to the specific one that's for that challenge. Okay, and then when they do it, you can check it off. And yes, okay. Questions? Just spilled hot tea on myself. <laughs> Okay, no questions? All right, put in the chat what level you got to. After you went through and checked all your boxes, what level of Search Ninja are you? Only level three? Kathy, you're going to have to go through this later. Oh, Michelle, I will definitely give you the link. This is just an example of how you can create a bunch of challenges and tasks. And they're all in one place. Do you notice that I have 29 different things for you to check off? But I don't have 29 assignments in Google Classroom. How many times when we're face to face do we have kids do something during the class time that you don't put in the grade book? Um, the whole time, the whole time, I, I always ask, take notes, oh, I don't put that in the gray book, uh, let's just have a class discussion, I don't put that in the gray book, I mean, there's five million things we do that don't go in the gray book, how does that translate to remote learning? So, I'm going to switch back to my slides. For remote learning, I'd like to give you a suggestion. And by the way, even if you're not doing remote learning and you're doing face-to-face, -face, this is something that I switched to years ago, and I think you should consider it, is I plan for the week instead of for the day. There's a few things we're doing today. There's some. But i like, okay, this is stuff you got to get done this week. It takes less pressure off of me because I don't feel like I have to get through everything today. There's a lot of things kids should be able to do and access without me, and I plan for that. So I'm really into the Catlin Tucker station rotation model where kids rotate and they go to each different station. Well, I can't get through all the stations in one day. So that's again where I plan for the week. And then they rotate to me and I work with students, Catlin Tucker, I'll put it down here. You should get all her books. And go to her website, it's a rabbit hole of awesome. CatlinTucker.com. I'll make a slide for that so that um, you can see it. CatlinTucker.com is a rabbit hole of awesome. She has written several books on blended learning, and I know some of her blog posts recently have been on virtual, you know, remote learning and things like that. Um, she's somebody I really, really admire. Uh, a lot. In fact, I like to say that I lead her fan club. So just get all of her books, start stalking her, you know, whatever you need to do. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, the, it, it's just this idea instead of everyone's doing the same time, and your time is being the sage on the stage, right? It's really hard to hit everybody at all levels all of the time. And the truth is, there's a lot of things kids can do without you. Thank goodness no matter their age level. And I want you to think about kindergartners. Don't they do stations where they work without the teacher? 
kindergartners can do this. Everyone can. I remember I volunteered in my son's kindergarten. Someone, I have five kids, so one of them, boy, girl, them. Uh, it's the, the, like the last week of school, the last week of school. And I was just so impressed with how the kids did all the stations and they knew what they were doing. And, you know, there's, she had really great classroom management. And then I had a baby. And so I was on maternity leave the first week of school. And so I got to volunteer the first week of school because I, I wasn't at my own school. And I swear to you, these kindergartners were doing the stations exactly like it was the last week of school, but it was the first week of school. I'm telling you, this woman was amazing. Shout out to Ms. Hipwood. And so, you know, this is really effective. Is that kids are doing, you know, they're getting up, they move, they're doing something different, they're working in small groups, and then you become a station. So I like to think about that for remote learning as well. What are they doing that they really don't need me for? And the answer is a lot. Thank goodness. So I'm going to have a topic in Google Classroom that says this week, and I have a topic that says today. Today is the few things I really need you to do today, right? What do I have here? Uh, right, okay. Uh, the top, you know, few things, you have to check in. I have a check-in assignment. That's how I take attendance. And then maybe something else, whatever. And then here's the rest of the stuff that you have all week to work on. The problem is I don't want to grade and touch all that stuff, you know? So what I would want you to do is to create a choice board of things for students to do for the week, and it's not the big assignments. I don't put in there, write an essay. I make that its own assignment in Google Classroom. And so you're going to create one assignment for the weekly choice board. Doesn't that sound better? having one assignment for the week instead of 20? Think of how much email you have less of, how much less clicks you'll have, how much more happier you'll be just looking at one thing. Now how the kids turn in their evidence um, could be a variety of things. I mean, it's in the one Google Classroom assignment. They can have up to 20 attachments. So I like screenshots. I basically require, if it's digital, they have to submit a screenshot. That's a general rule. But I probably would recommend, if depending on how much stuff you have, like if they can just attach it, fine. But if you're, if you're worried it might be a bit much or you'd like it a different way, they can make a Google Slides and they add all of their evidence to the Google Slides, like a portfolio for the activity. So that's, a, that's an option as well. They can just go create slides. Now here's my rule, don't do for kids what they can do for themselves. They can make their own blank slides. You don't need to make a template of a blank slides. In Google Classroom, the students have a create button that says create slides. Let them do it, teach them how to do it, do it often. They're, Hillary, they're gonna each have their own copy. So this is um, the one thing for the week and they are going to go through at their own pace and they're gonna check them off and they're gonna provide evidence of those things. Now, to be honest, this is what I used to do. The first two weeks of school, I check everything, everything, like meticulously. They're like, she has no life, she looks at all my stuff, and then after that, I check nothing. <laughs> I'm not joking. It's like, once they get used to knowing how to have them self-assess, they all self-assess on a rubric, and essentially, isn't that what they're doing here? So like, I did that. You could add columns for them to explain what they did and provide their evidence. This is the, the template I'm going to show you, but similar. Um, but I just like, all those little things, let's pretend they cheated. I just don't care. They're little things. I have my regular assignments, which I'm doing all the four C's with the creative critical thinking and in those fewer assignments that I'm touching, but doing a higher quality job. And then I put a bunch of stuff in here. And you know what? You just can't, you just can't micromanage everything. That's my opinion. If you want to micromanage everything, you certainly can. You do that. 
I'll be uh, sitting at my fire pit while you do. Just relax. I'm just saying. I'm making jokes, my friends. I'm making jokes. And then I make it one grade in the grade book. So it is, you know, week seven, choice four. That's what the grade book is. That's what I put in the grade book. Week seven, choice four. And then I, set, I say they have to get to a certain level. So you see I'm level four with seven badges. So you, you pick it. It doesn't matter. What I usually will do is I'll go through and I'll check box a bunch of them. Like, oh, they should do at least those. I'm like, okay, they got to get to level five. And then I say, you got to be level five by the end of the week or whatever you set it up to be. Pick it. The trick is it can't be a game if they don't have any choice. Then it's just a to-do list. To-do list or choice board. Choice is really motivating. So I think, okay, I want them to do 80% of this. So I'm going to go through and check box 80% of the check boxes, see what level that is, and then that's what I say they have to be. It's also okay if you're like, some of these are not optional. You have to do them. So I would probably just use the paint can. Be like, these aren't optional. Make this orange too. Like, not optional. Those, those you got to do. Oh. Al yeah, we don't that would have screen. been helpful if I was showing my screen. Yes. Mm. Okay, let's try that again. Okay. Do you notice how it says you're level five with 10 patches? This is the bane of my existence is whether or not I'm showing my screen. So, um, you know, whatever the level is, and you do have the ability to change the levels. So I have here the levels, and to be level two is four points, and then level three is 35 points. And the reason I have such a huge jump is because I don't want them to think if I do three things, I'm level three. So this is the rules of games. Whenever you start a new game, don't you get you win right away. You always win right away. When you play Angry Birds, even if you're my one-year-old would always beat level one. So what I want is as soon as they checkbox any checkbox, they immediately level up to level two. Then I want them to do at least three more checkboxes so that they've done four things to be level three. Otherwise, they think it's one to one. You know what I'm saying? And it incrementally gets harder. So I want you to think about when you play uh, World of Warcraft, because I know you all play World of Warcraft just like me. And at first, I need, 100, I need 150 XP to get to level two. And then I need... 8 million XP to get from level 86 to level 87. You see how just between the levels it gets incrementally a little bit harder? So the trick is to making a really good game is they get, they level up fast at first. But it's not one to one. They got to do more than one checkbox to move up one level, okay? And then it gets a little harder to level up. Doing a little game strategy. And so what I do is I will spend quite a bit of time like checking the check boxes and I'm like, that leveled too fast. So I come back to the levels and I keep changing the point values for how much you need for each level. It's, a, it's an art. Setting levels is an art. At first, just set the levels and don't worry about it. You'll get better at it. I'll let you know when I'm good at it. I'm not there yet. But it's fun to do. It's fun to do. So there should be some level of choice. They shouldn't have to do any, everything. But if they do have to do something, what's your system? I would just use the pink can and color code the ones that are mandatory. So I say you have to get to level six and you have to do the orange ones. 
Now, because sometimes kids are colorblind, I try to always put an emoji in there instead of relying on color. So I would not just say find the orange ones. I'd go to emojipedia.org and I'd add a, oops, add an emoji, you know, an emoji in there. There we go. And the ones that are required some way. Figure out your own system. But I'm just pointing out you should have some system. Okay? Questions about the choice board? I see content, knowledge, skills, or both. There are three reasons that you make a quest. We're not calling them assignments. We have one assignment, and the assignment is the choice board. These are not assignments. They are quests. Their quests and we would do them for fun now I would never assign a word search as an assignment it's low critical thinking in fact it's DOK zero I looked it up I spent two hours looking up research papers and to my suspicion you don't learn a lot by circling things so whatever the kids like to do it here's my kid hey buddy do you like to do word searches he said no. Okay. Don't give them to him, but my daughter likes to do them. I'm, I'm going to go see if my friends are home. That sounds super sudden. Go see if your friends are home. Okay. <laughs> We're having a good time over here. So, um, you know, there's coloring. I wouldn't assign coloring, but it's they're fun. So we're, don't put it as an assignment. Put all that stuff in your choice board. I hear this all the time. Well, some of the kids like it. Yeah, some of the kids like it. It's not a learning activity. It's a culture building activity. It's things we do for fun, something to talk about. Awesome. That goes really great on your choice board. So, and you should do that. You should have some in there that are just playing out silly. And because it's a choice, you can put some that says, you know, record yourself dancing in a circle three times. That's not an assignment, but it gets them up and moving because sitting is worse than smoking. So, you know, I do this when I'm in class, when I feel like we've been sitting for a while. I'm like, okay, everybody stand up and go give five high fives. And so we move around the room, we do five high fives, and we sit back down. Like I try to, in my face-to-face -face class, give wiggle time. And so I can embed all of those things in there where throughout the week, I'm like, on Monday, um, do 10 jumping jacks and they just check it off maybe they didn't do it I don't know I don't care I can't care about everything I care about some things I don't care if they did the jumping jacks but I'll tell you what my kids would do the jumping jacks and they would check it off like All right jumping jacks so just for fun just for movement just for health go take a drink of water I wouldn't put that as an assignment, but I would certainly put it as a choice. I'd think about what are some healthy things that kids could do. Learn a keyboard shortcut. Okay. Now then, I want to have things that are about the standards. I'm like, these are my assignments. I need, you, you need to do some of these things. So I'll put a quizzes, put a link to a game, an online game. And it, whatever they're doing, I want them to take screenshots and submit it. So they're going to take some evidence, whatever it is. Uh, these are things I'm not going to necessarily grade. So I like digital quizzes and things that they'll submit. I tell them, you know, go to uh, go do this Desmos or GeoGebra activity where it's a little applet and like find the pattern. So it's an explore activity. I love explore and inquiry. Why well, don't grade that? So that's something I can put on there. And maybe some of my smaller assignments where normally I would grade them, I'm just willing to give that up. I'm like, yeah, I don't really want to grade it. I mean, you could still grade it. You could still go look at their work, give them feedback for sure, because you're going to tell them how you want them to submit their evidence. So you could still do that. But again, it's, it's kind of the smaller stuff, and I would have a, a whole list of it. Attends a Google Meet. Attends the video meeting. They can check it off. Ask a question in the chat. 
you know, it's a lot of compliance stuff. I don't grade compliance. This isn't a grade. This is just choices. And they could easily not do any of those and still get full credit. But it gives them some choices of way that they demonstrate that they're being active in the class. And the more choices, the better. And if they, they don't show up to any Google Meets, whatever, I don't know, you know, what are they doing instead? And I have some, some things in there. I usually like to make those options just worse than just showing up. Like, oh, sure, well, you could just do 30 problems out of the book instead. You have a choice. I'm making a joke, sort of. I do do that, though, if I really want them to do something, because I always give a choice. Whatever the assignment is, I try for there to be at least two choices, problems 1 through 10 or 11 through 20. You can do these three problems on Quizlet, or you can do problems 1 through 30 out of the book. Take your pick. And they just have such a better attitude about doing the thing I really wanted them to do. It's amazing. Um, I personally do credit, no credit, Brenda, because I moved to that, that I do everything credit, no credit. But obviously, you can choose to do it however you want. So if you, if you said, look, if you get to level 3, you get a C. If you get to level 10, you get a B. And if you get to level 15 or better, you get an A. You, you're certainly welcome to do that. So I think this would fit in no matter what scheme that you're doing. Okay. You ready to I think I'm on the point where we're going to make one? Yes, we are. Okay, so for the rest of this time, we are going to make one of them together. So you're going to go to alicekeeler.com slash badge game. And I want to remind you that you're going to make one for the week. Um, Brenda, we should just have a whole other thing about what I do because it won't, it won't be what you do. I've done a ton and ton of research on grading practices and I just can't find any to support what we normally do. So I actually, um, grade with a rubric. I don't do total points. My class is not based on earning points. So I have different things that I look for evidence of learning and at the end of the semester we conference. I believe Star Saxton does something similar. So if you want to join her Facebook group, Teachers Throwing Out the Grades, um, I would definitely recommend checking that out. Star is a great resource for that. Today I'm going to try to avoid ranting about grading, even though that is one of my favorite things to rant about. Okay, so we're going to go to alicekeeler.com slash badge game. And you're going to make one of these per week. So every week you're going to do alicekeeler.com slash badge game. Templates free. All of it's free. If you want to change the colors, and I only mention that because if you're making one every week, it's helpful if each week is a different color. So do you see how I just highlighted the rows and I use the paint can and then I highlight the column and I use the paint can and then I can change the color if you want that's really superfluous personally I just like when I open it up I know what week it is because I know what color it is it's fine you notice I have a few defaults that the first two things should be really easy I want them every week to have easy wins because success builds success so if I can get them like some things that they're successful at, even if they're just dance in a circle, great, whatever it is. And I have a box that I've added for their evidence. So if they, if they put it into a Google Slides, they can link to the Google Slides. Um, if they have a, I don't know, if there's something that they, they might just type it. I did it. So you can tell them what you want in the evidence box. And you might just say, put your evidence in Google Classroom as a short video. I don't know. I think you probably shouldn't collect videos of minors dancing, but whatever. Uh, so. I make jokes. Okay? So now think about this for the very first week of school. If you were to make one of these 
for the first week? What are some just easy wins of things they could do that they could check off? They logged in the first day. Now, this is XP. It is not points. Repeat after me. Not points. It's candy. I give it away free like candy because it's not points. It's experience points. It's game points. It's leveling up points. It's not class points. XP is experience points. So the XP, they don't get five points in the grade book. They get five XP towards leveling up. So I'm like, I really want them to do this. So even though it's really easy, I'm going to make it 50 XP. So I just set the XP to be how much do I want them to do it. So then they, you um, opened this spreadsheet. It's like that's a gimme. A gimme. What are some gimmies they could have? Um did the intro assignment. So even though I said I don't put the big assignments on here, I, like the assignment itself is not on here, but they can say I did them so that they can level up because they completed these tasks. This isn't where I grade it or assess it. This is just allowing them to say this is one of the things I did this week. Now the intro assignment is not optional. So they got to do that. We're going to watch a YouTube video on math facts. We are going to ask the teacher a question. By the way, you have to keep the list going. It goes five, six, however many things you have on there. I don't know if you know this, but you can drag it. Leveling up is based on this levels tab. So we're going to get there. So my general way that I do it is that a regular task is worth 5 XP. A regular task is worth 5 XP. And then I put as much XP on things relative to the 5 as as I think the task would encourage them to do. And if I really want them to do it, I just make it worth a lot of XP. But the trick is, is that I tell them they have to get to level 10, right? Well, I make level 10 be a thousand points or something stupid. Like, they'd have to do the big ones to get there. You see? I'm so tricky. You, yeah, you have a choice. You don't have to do that. You'll never make it if you don't do that one. Ah, look at me. Master of assignment manipulation. So what I do is I go through and I just list all the stuff I want them to do for the week. Just some lesson planning. You're just making a list. And I on purpose add extras. I on purpose say eat lunch standing up. I put in just some fun, silly things that no one can say they couldn't do. And I definitely put some things in there that ask them to move around. Especially as we're doing this remote learning, it's just so important that kids don't sit the entire day in front of a screen, right? And then um, I'm going to put some challenges in there. Like, you don't have to do this. Where we used, to, I don't, I'm not into extra credit. I don't like extra credit, you know. But some kids want to do something more challenging. So I give them a choice. Here's what I find. I'll give an assignment. I'll be like, hey, do problems 1 through 10. Or you can do this one open middle problem that's DOK3, and you're going to really struggle through it. And it's going to take you twice as long. And I have a bunch of kids that they'd rather do the more, the more challenging work, what I find a lot of times is some of my kids are just bored. I, what, I, what I used to do is I'd be like, okay, look, if you'll do all of this compliance, if you'll do all these things you already know how to do. Now, I taught Algebra 1 
for 14 years. And the only way to get into Algebra 1 at the high school is to fail Algebra 1 at the middle school, which means every single one of them was reviewing this stuff. And yet, for some stupid reason, every year I started Chapter 1, Section 1. Well, I'm boring the snot out of a bunch of those kids. In fact, all of them know how to do 1.1. Why am I doing a whole lesson on that? Why did it take me years to figure this out? And so I say, look, you can do this lesson with me, or you can do this challenge that shows number sense and is actually interesting. And so what I would find is the kids want to do the interesting thing, but they don't want to do it after they do the compliance. So if I let them do it instead of, they would do the more challenging work. Whereas if I gave them stuff they already knew how to do and they were bored, they just wouldn't do anything, period. They would do nothing. And that's just, those are my kids. That's what I noticed. So what can I put in here that's more of a challenge? Well, I was telling you about open middle. So I'm going to go to open middle. I'm going to find... An activity here. Open middle is DOK level two, DOK level three level math problems. So using the digits one to nine, at most one time each, fill in the boxes. Okay, so what I'm going to do, do this with me, control T and do slides.new. Control T and do slides.new. And this is my Week one choice board stuff. Add some slides, doesn't matter which slide. So on here, I'm doing open middle problem. I'm going to copy and paste this. Copy, image, paste it. I'm going to get the directions. Copy, paste. Make that a little bit bigger. And then I can put on here, on paper, do this activity, you need to show multiple attempts and your strategy. Take pictures into a Google Slides and add to the Google Classroom assignment. Right, so I, I get one slide here where I've shown the activity. And I'm going to copy the link, this link right up here at the top. I'm on slide three, and I copy the link right at the top where I'm on slide three. Open middle is exclusively for math, yes. And then I come back over here. Where's my open middle problem? Do open middle problem. And I say click here. And I control K, hyperlink, <laughs> hyperlink. Control K, whoops, I guess I didn't actually copy that. I just told you to. Try that again. And I link to that slide. Do you notice at the end it says slide ID and a bunch of funky things? Those funky things is that particular slide. It's linking to that slide. And I apply. Oops, watch this. I clicked on it on accident, but it opened up to slide three. Now on this one, I say ask the teacher a question. So I'm going to go to forms.google.com, and maybe I have a form where students can ask a question. We'll pretend it's this one. It's not, but we're going to pretend that it is. Now if this was the one that you were doing, again, which it's not, I would go to the Responses tab and click on the three dots to get an email notification for new responses because it's not in Google Classroom. So if they fill out a Google form from the choice board, it'd be nice to know that someone did it. So if you're going to throw Google Forms in your choice board, do the get email notifications. OK, so on this one, I'm going to say click here, Control K hyperlink, and I hyperlink to the form. This one's watching a math facts YouTube. So I'm going to YouTube. 
math, fact, song. Whoa, that's a lot of ads. Okay. Hey guys, today we are trying I would like 1.8 million hits on my videos. Maybe I just need to wear cat ears. Click here. I have one of my videos that has like 14,000 hits. I'm feeling pretty good about that. Most of them have 50. Okay. Right? So the links might not all be to the Google Slides, but some of them are. So, you know, on this one, I'm like, um, learn the keyboard shortcut control C. I'm really big into teaching kids control, uh, keyboard shortcuts. So then back on those same Google Slides, I'm like, control C is copy. In a Google Doc, type the word supercalifragilisticexpialidocious and copy it by highlighting the word and using control C to copy the word. Now use control V to paste it 100 times. I'm not making real assignment samples. Just so you know. <laughs> I wouldn't have them do it a hundred times, but I'd have them do it more times than they'd want to type it, you know? Now I use Snagit. Let me um, stop presenting and present my whole screen. My entire screen. Now Snagit, I cannot live without Snagit. Snagit lets me take screenshots and do all these awesome things. Like do you see this one where it makes an animation? I love that about Snagit, it's just so cool. Anyway, I made a blank one, and I'm gonna insert some- You're not stuff. showing anything. I, I put it on, oh, dang it. You know you have to confirm that you wanna do the whole screen. I'm like, I know I did it. Uh, Kathy, if they're on Chromebooks, I just have them use you know the control shift window switcher key to take a screenshot. And then you just hit, if you're quick, you hit copy and they paste it into a Google Slides. So basically from the first day, the first week, I want to teach them how to just turn in a bunch of screenshots. So on my choice board, I'm going to have turn in a whole bunch of screenshots of anything that you do online, like that's appropriate. Uh, if you really, and my son, I don't know, he likes to watch videos of kids eating candy, fine. Then show me all these screenshots of your favorite YouTubers. So that's how I'm going to start off. My year is asking them to do things I know they like to do. Share with me all your YouTubers but with screenshots and a Google Slides. And then I know they know how to do these screenshots and a Google Slides. Now you can see my whole screen. This is Snagit. It allows me to make these fun animations. I cannot live without it. And it also lets me make stamps. So I'm going to do that right now. Stamp. And I take the stamp, and I want control, C. Okay, and then, look how cool this is. I literally drag it onto my slides. I can also drag that cool animation right onto my slides. Look at this just boom and now it's animated on my slides. I love snag it. It's so cool. All right, so now I'm on slide four. I'm going to stop the screen share. And I'm going to do just the window. I knew I was going to regret doing just the window. Yeah, anyway. Whatever. And I'm copying this link. I'm copying this link up here at the top. That's the link to slide four. So back in my choice board, I'm like, click here, control K, and it goes to the same Google Slides that the other one went to. So this is how I make my tutorials, my instructions. I might make another one where I'm like, let's talk about parabolas. And I'm gonna screen share my whole screen entire screen. Okay. So then I'm going to turn on Screencastify. I'm going to turn on my webcam. 
So, okay, so if a parabola is going to make a U shape like this or a U shape like this, and the vertex is at the top or it's at the bottom, and what we're looking for is where the parabola goes through the x-axis, and those are my x-intercepts. Oops. See, I thought I was finishing the screencast. If I had accidentally just stopped screen sharing. All right. Uh, sure. Okay, right? So I have made this really bad instructional video, but at least it's only 27 seconds. As you all know, no one loves a 30-second or less video more than me. So I'm like, Alice talks parabolas. And I'm going to see here it says copy shareable link. So I could just put that right into the um, spreadsheet. Or because it's Screencastify and it saves to Google Drive, I just go insert video from Google Drive. Now, it's not done, so it's not done. So I'll use this one just because it is done. Huh. Okay. So I can make it small, but the reason why I like to insert the video The reason I like to insert the videos because on slides, I can also put text, right? I'm really big into you shouldn't rely on just video. You should have the, at least the key information in text. Video takes up a lot of bandwidth, and if they're using their cell phones and their data and some of these things, that can be a problem. Or it's just low bandwidth. You can't watch videos when you have low bandwidth. So I try to always make the information available in text. So that way I can make my video, I can insert video from um, Google Drive or YouTube, and then I can also have a text box. I'm going to copy the link to this and go back to my choice board. I'm going to be like, Learn what a parabola is. Now, did you see that was a really small task? It wasn't the entire lesson. It was a small part of it. You could be like, do the whole lesson on parabolas. Checkbox here. Whatever. Okay? So why don't you go ahead. What you're going to do is think about stuff you might do the first week. What are easy wins? Start putting those into column G. And then you are going to have a Google Slides. You have one Google Slides. Don't forget to change the sharing permissions, you guys, on those slides. Duh. You're going to make one Google Slides, and you're going to make at least two slides be two different pieces of direction. Like, this set of directions has nothing to do with this set of directions, right? So each slide is, like, directions or the math problems or the – or whatever. The tutorial, you're going to copy the link at the top of that slide and hyperlink it back on the badges page – or on the, on the page, okay? And then I'm going to answer your questions, and I'm going to give you a few minutes to do that. Um, screenshot is control shift window switcher key, which looks like a rectangle with two lines next to it. It's like near the eight key or something. The link to what? Here's the link to my slides. Oh. So Michelle, videos do not play offline, which is another great reason to always have text that goes with your video. Personally, I do not rely on videos to teach, and there's a lot of reasons why videos are problematic. Number one being the bandwidth. Definitely I include videos. 
but I use videos to enhance, to show my personality, to demonstrate some things. Um, oh yeah, to continue, this is a fun, this is a fun reason to use spreadsheets. What it is, you have to get the patterns. You highlight two numbers, you highlight the two numbers, and you'll notice that there is a square in the corner, and you pull down the square, and it continues the numbering. You should definitely practice that. You know, especially since, you know, even me, the other day, my internet went out. You never know, a kid might not have internet. So having, situ and then, you know, then I got to go to the McDonald's. McDonald's does not have great Wi-Fi. I can't go watch a video easily sitting in McDonald's. I mean, I can wear headphones, I guess. But even then, it's noisy. So I just have a real strong belief that you should always, well, it's accessibility, too is you should have a transcript of your videos. So I don't have a transcript where it's word for word, but I at least have the information where if you don't watch the video, you can get it in text. I feel pretty strongly about that. Any questions? Anyone need any help? I definitely make a new slides presentation every week. Absolutely. I when I make the one slides, I make it for that game. It's one I do one slides per game. Now I might need a more extensive slides, which is a tutorial or something where they make a, they have a copy or something. And I can just link to the other slides for that particular quest. You know, the what you put in the link doesn't have to link to the slides. But it's kind of nice that since I'm going to have a whole bunch of small things, I need a bunch of small directions. And then I just have one Google Slides with all of them. You can see how convenient that is. Um, I don't make sure the difficulty levels are in order. Definitely not, Kathy. My rule is I want the first several, at least the first three, to be easy. At least the first three... Anybody coming off the street who has never done a darn thing in my class ever could get those done. You know, color this map. You know, then I start getting into things that are more content-based. So definitely every week I'm going to, and it, and it might be content-based or whatever, but I think it's nice to start them off with something fun. That's not a requirement, but you can see how you, you're trying to get them engaged in the activity. So if they're like, this is fun, I like doing these, I'm leveling up, I'm feeling successful, and then you're like, wham, here's some math. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I do that in my face-to-face -face class. You know, we just do some stuff for fun. But no, they're definitely not in order, in fact, if I give something really more challenging, then I try to give something fun and easy after it. And you know, they're all broken up into chunks. They can do it in different time levels. If you wanted to, you could add another column for how much time you think it would take. Now, however much time you think it'll take, it'll actually take three times longer, so remember that. So if you're going to put down five minutes, put down 15.
How do you take a screenshot on a um, Chromebook again? It is Control, Shift, and then the Windows Switcher key. One on one, take bets that it's my blog that comes up. Okay, thank you. That is not my blog, nor is that one. How to take the screen? No, okay. The answer is zero. But there, you saw there was a ton of blog posts, websites that'll tell you how to do it. So it's the control, and that's the window switcher key. I have lost SEO. Should make a new one. If I link to a slides and the slides as well as the spreadsheet are available offline and added this, will the link to the slide work? Probably. So the trick is they just need to open them. They need to open them um, before they're offline. It's got to load. And then it's in their drive. You can file, make available offline. I definitely would teach them that up front. I need to like take some notes here. I should, those are good tips. I should write them down. If I had any paper anywhere. That's why the Lord invented Google Keep. Control T, keep dot new. And I'd like some checkboxes because I really like me some checkboxes. And so I am going to do um, blog post on screenshot on the Chromebook. I have, it, but it's been a while, so I'll make a recent one. The one I just, what did I just say? Oh yeah, teach them to. No, I forgot. At the beginning, you want to teach them to do what? Oh, yeah, do offline. Now, here's a big thing that I do when I'm teaching on, you know, with distance, with digital tools. When I make directions, my directions include technology steps. I'm like, go and click on this menu, and I take screenshots of the menus, any buttons I want them to click on, I take screenshots of those, and I integrate them into my directions document for the activity. Alice, you had mentioned site that you just loved and you were you were copying a making a copy of something and adding it to your slides and I have forgotten the name of whatever it was that you just love and you can't live without. Oh, snag it, snag it. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Dot com slash snag it and you can get a discount. It is a one time cost. I'd say I don't get paid, but I guess technically I do. So I asked them for a discount code, and they insisted the only way they would do a discount code is with a affiliate thing. So you get a discount, and then I get a kickback. But I've never gotten a check from them, so it ain't working. <laughs> I don't. I told them I don't want any money back. I I like to share it. Whatever. So just fair warning. Here's another one that I'll get a kickback on. AliceKeela.com slash sticker mule. We both get ten dollars credit. And I have a sticker mule addiction. I'm gonna stop presenting so that you can see my laptop. You see this? I designed these stickers, not all of them. I didn't do the Gmail stickers, but like this one that the answer is always a spreadsheet. I made that and I send it to sticker mule. And then these jerks every Tuesday send you a special where you can get stickers for $19. And then I'm like, I do need that. And then the next week, like, do you want some coasters for $19 or $27 or whatever their special price is for the week? I'm like, I do want some coasters. So, and then I like them so much, I ended up ordering a thousand of them. And I have a thousand Alice Keeler coasters. So if anyone needs an Alice Keeler coaster, you let me know. <laughs> 
It's just, it's just like, that sounds like fun. I just love making, I should do a whole webinar and just making stickers for Sticker Mule. Um, Google Keep is like Post-it Notes, but it's Google. So of course, I, I have the Keep app on my phone. If I open up on any device, I go to keep.google.com. Then I'm going to find all my notes. Now here's what I do. I make a shopping list and I send my husband to the store where it has these check boxes, right? And then I share it with him. It says collaborators. I mean, it's, it's a Google product, so you can put their email in there. And so while he's at the store and he's checking stuff off, I can see he's getting all this stuff. And then I'm adding more to the list while he's there. Yes. Now think about how you could do that with students. You've got some kid, you play let's make a deal, like I need you to do these 10 things over the weekend so you can get caught up. You can share a Google Keep note with them. There's no version history, so if they delete it, you're toast, take a screenshot or something. But, um, you know, then they can check off what they've completed and you can see what they've completed. Uh, you can also, it integrates with, you can see here on the sidebar of my Google Slides and my Google Docs, it has Google Keep. Um, did I save this one? Let me save it just by closing it. So now, where was I? Here. So now when I go to Google Keep, that note that I just made should be here. Are these pinned? Oh, it's right here. Look at this. I drag it off of Google Keep into my Google Slides. So as I'm like at the grocery stores, I'm wandering around. You're not seeing my computer. I need someone to be more like with it here and just make like a horn noise or something. All right. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. I'm going to just do window. This one. Dang it. Okay, let's try this again. I go into Google Keep. I add check boxes and I'm like, um, has a topic sentence, um, uses grammar, has glitter, my rubric. Okay, it's just, it's post-it notes. These are my notes. And then I go into Google Slides or Google Doc, and in the sidebar, you see it has the keep icon. And I'm like, okay, they used grammar, but they don't have a topic sentence or glitter. So I'm just going to drag this over here. I literally drag this over here, and it allows me to drop in a rubric onto their Google Slides or their Google Doc where I just check it off. So then I come back over here for the next student, and I uncheck that. And I'm like, dude, you didn't do anything. And I just drag it. I'm like, you got to do all of them. Or I'll put, like, common feedback that I'm going to use into a Google Keep note, and then I can just drag it onto their documents. It's awesome. I can think of probably a million reasons to do this. Yeah, just, just throw it in. Or I just want to look at it. Sometimes I just want to see the list. I don't drag it. I just look at it. Whatever. Okay, back to the choice board. Now that you have created your list of things and it's really boring, remember we're making a game. Don't be boring. Now you got to get a quest title. What clever way would I say you logged in the first day? I'm thinking something like Star Trek. I will. I like to do like cultural jokes that they wouldn't understand. I used to like to do Bill Cosby ones, but that's not a good idea anymore. You guys remember picture pages? Anyone old enough for picture pages? So I'd always like make picture pages jokes or comments that I knew the kids didn't know because I'm just old. I, and then I laughed to myself because I'm only funny to myself. So log in the first day, captain's log. Opened this spreadsheet. The answer is always a spreadsheet. Did the intro assignment? Yeah, I did that. Ooh. 
looky there. I, it, it's hard to be clever. Share it with a student after you're done the week in advance. Who gets to make the quest titles? And have a, just share it with a student and let them make the quest titles of the week. They'll like doing it. I don't like doing it. I'm terrible at it. <laughs> How can I make a fun a game quest title? And then after you give them a quest title, you have to like, okay, how hard is this? How hard is it to watch a video? That's easy. And I'm just you're like, 5 XP, whatever. And ask the teacher a question. Okay, that's easy, but I'm going to give you 100 XP. So they're both level one, but I really want you to do this one. Questions? Do a quick stretch break because now we're going to make badges. Okay, what we're going to do, I'm going to do three minute timer and it's going to run on there. We're going to take a three minute, like just go to the bathroom stretch break and then we're going to make the badges because if you don't want to make the badges, that's fine. You don't have to, but then you're stuck with the badges I have. And if you don't want to push pin in a yellow circle, so Marlene, I just make them separate assignments every week. And I want to remind you that this is not points. It's XP. So if I tell them to get to level 7 or 10 or whatever it is, I say the whole assignment is worth 10 points. And it's those 10 points that go in the grade book. This XP just means nothing. That's why I made it 100. Ask the teacher a question, 100, because it's free. They're not really points. It's just game. It's for the game. Figure out what to cook for dinner, too. The other morning when I was, my alarm went off and I was laying in bed, I was like, I bet I could cook a pork chop in, in the air fryer. We're on a break, right? So talking about my air fryer. So I got up and I made myself a pork chop for breakfast. <laughs> and I don't know why I thought about that, but I have pork chops. And maybe now I'll make pork chops in the air fryer for dinner. Maybe. <laughs> it happened. Can you get enough in an air fryer for your whole family? No, no. In fact, I have the little air fryer. It was um, it was on sale at Target last week for forty bucks when it's normally sixty bucks. So I bought it, and it fits one pork chop, <laughs> and not a big man pork chop. <laughs> I buy the thin pork chop, or like about the size of the, your palm. And that fits there. Yeah. And then I, I went to Taco Bell. So where I live, the nearest anything is an hour away. So I was over in the big city, quote unquote, which is still not a big city. But it has a Taco Bell over there. And I got a 10-pack of tacos, and I brought that home. And my kids were complaining that they were soggy. I said, no problem. And I put the tacos from Taco Bell in the air fryer. <laughs> Uh, um. At my house, that means you cook dinner. Could exactly. I, could I exactly. dinner idea? Exactly. It, it definitely counts. 
Well, I'm coming along. Oh, we ran out of time. You know, I just moved and I got a bunch of things. I got my Instant Pot. And my, you have to look this up. But if you do a Google search for Instant Pot Cart, it comes right up. And so this is like one of the first things I bought. Is this, It's a round cart that you get at Target and it fits your Instant Pot. And then I just wheel it over to the wall where the plug is. I don't even take it out of the cart. And then I use my Instant Pot, and then I wheel it into some corner where I don't have to look at it. It's amazing, and it doesn't take up any counter space that way. I love that. Okay. Our break is over. <laughs> you said you had three of them. I do have three. And two of the three will fit on the cart. So I can put the really big one on the top, and I can put the really small one on the bottom. The medium-sized one will not fit in the middle, but I need to put the small one's lid in the middle because the small one won't fit with the lid on on the bottom, um, but but still look at how much counter space I'm freeing up. I only brought one with me to Kansas. The other two are in California. I don't know how I'm gonna cope with only one Instant Pot, you guys, I don't know. I mean, you see, Celeste, you can actually Google Instant Pot card. It comes right up, it's, it's, it's like a thing. It's a thing. Okay, so now we are in here and you're like, so what I want you to do is first, very slowly, check the check boxes. So it should start off with your level one with zero batches. And then I check one, it should say your level two. And then I'm gonna check another one, it should not say that I'm level three. It should not. Okay, so then I am gonna go Actually, that's fine, because I only have two of them. I have two badges, I'm level three, so I'm fine. Okay, but then I'm gonna check another one. Do you see how it says level three with three badges? I don't like that. I don't like that. So I'm gonna come over here to the levels. I'm gonna say level three. Now if I look over here, I right now have 65 XP. So I am gonna make that one 66. So now you need 66 to be level three. Yeah. -ha. All right. So now I'm level two. Cool. And I check another one and I'm level three. Oops. And I check another one and I'm level four. I'm like, that was too quick. And I've got 170 XP. Okay. So to get to level four, you've got to be 200. So do you see what I do is I just slowly check the check boxes and I see how fast I'm leveling up. And if I level up too fast, I go over to the levels tab and I just make it harder to level. <laughs> and so tricky. Because I want them to do like two, three, four, five of them before they get to the next level. At least between eight and nine, between levels eight and nine, they should have to do four, five, six tasks before they level up, you know? I've got this progress bar. If you don't have to do a whole bunch of them to level up, the progress bar is kind of stupid. So I'm just saying. I know you're impressed with my spreadsheet skills and my progress bar. Yeah, yeah, Hillary, that's fine. Obviously, choices allow them Very to level impressive. up. I generally structure it in the order I think they would do it, but they will obviously not do it in that order, and then it is what it is, right? Okay, so now, what you're gonna do is come over here to the badges tab. And in column B, you're gonna highlight column B and hit delete. So column B is all of the badges, so I want you to just delete them. Oh my gosh, my mosquito bites are driving me crazy. Quick and dirty for mosquito bites where I don't have to like make up eucalyptus and things that I don't have. Um, you put toothpaste on them. I know you all have that, so now you know. And then your feet smell minty. Now, if you come over here to, look, to column J, you'll see I have these badge URLs. Don't make all of them. We're going to make some of them. But let's first, I see, you see how it tells me the description? Like I know it is logged in the first day. Okay. 
Is any of these badges good enough for logged in the first day? Look at this nice thumbprint. I'm going to copy the link in column J, and I'm going to paste it into column B. And now the first quest is a thumbs up. So if you could please practice just use, finding some badges that are already made and is good enough. I got this cat. What is this weird cat should be? Learn what a parabola is. Its tail is almost curving like a parabola. No problem, Mimi. Thank you. I can't concentrate. I'm so tired. I'm really need to go. Oh, I understand. You got up with me early this morning, too. Yeah. All right. Take care. Bye. It's all right. I knew that this was going to be longer, but it's, it's, they're fun to make. They're just, you know, a lot of pieces to it. Hmm. Okay, any questions about getting the pre-made ones out of J and putting them in B? Is that part okay? All right, so now you're ready to just make your own, right? You make your own? Okay, so I'm going to do it real fast so that you can watch me, and then I'll do it real slow so you can listen to me. You ready? Okay, the first, well, the cheating way to do it is to go to the template and make a copy. If you want to cheat, you can just use the template, just so you know. Okay, but I'm going to go control T. I'm going to go drawings.google.com. It takes me to a Google drawing that looks nothing like a badge. And I'm going to call it badge template. And then I'm going to go file. Page setup, customize it, and then I want it to be kind of big because sometimes I like to print them out on paper and put them on my walls. Like they're going to be small in the spreadsheet, but if you wanted to print them out for realsies to give kids like a certificate or something, it's kind of nice to have it bigger. So I'm just going to do it five inches by five inches. You know, why not? Apply. Now, the trick to making a badge is to hold down the shift key. Hold down the shift key and it makes a perfect circle. And you're like, Alice, that is not a good looking badge. It's not a good looking badge. I'm like, you're right, because it's weird blue. So I make it a different color. Like, still not a good looking badge, Alice. I don't get it. You made a circle. That's not a badge, it's a circle. That's right, because the trick to a badge the trick to a badge is to make the border width thicker. Kapow, badge. Look at that. Badge. Okay, so now this is my template. So that's what I want you to do is to make a template. So now I'm going to do it slower where you can listen to me. If you'll control T, new tab. Drawings.google.com. Control T, new tab, drawings.google.com. This is why I need two hours, because it's really two different workshops. One's badge making, the other one's the choice board. I can do the choice board in an hour, but I can't do it where we're making the badges. You are going to name it Badge Template. Badge Template. You're going to go to the File menu and do Page Setup. File, Page Setup. And then instead of Standard, I go to Custom. And I make it five inches by five inches. It just needs to be square. It doesn't really matter the size. Just make it square. I just figure if like, I want to print it, five inches is pretty good. Apply. 
So you have a square. Okay, in the toolbar, you got to go to shapes and choose circle. And then holding the shift key, shift key, shift key, shift key, make a circle. I like to like, do you see how you can get it so that it shows you that it's centered? If you were like, I don't, that's too hard. You go to arrange and you choose center on the page and then you know it's centered. So there's a choice that I never use because I like the red lines. Like, and centered. You know, like, this does not look like a badge, Alice. This does not look like a badge. Yeah. Click on the circle and go to the line width and make your line width really big. And if you want, you can do the paint can and make a different color. How are we doing? So, we good? Now it's our template. Yep. So if you want to... Come back and watch me. I'll do the next couple of steps, and then we'll, I'll do it kind of fast, and then I'll do it slow again. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to file, make a copy, because it's my template, so I need a copy. And I know you're like, Alice, I thought you didn't like copies. In this case, I have to have them. Okay, so this one was the spreadsheet badge. I one where they had to open the spreadsheet. So now that I've made a copy, I'm going to change the color because, of course, I don't want them to all be the same color. And I'm going to go insert image. I'm going to search the web for a spreadsheet. Yeah. I'm going to put that spreadsheet in there. Look at that. Uh, do you see how it has this thick border on it? Because I had the circle selected and then it matches the borders. So you can get rid of that. If you want okay so now I have a spreadsheet badge is that look good then what you gotta do is you gotta go file publish to the web this is essential this is the trick this is the trick y'all publish to the web and any other product makes it a website publish to the web in Google drawings makes it an image so I'm gonna do publish to the web I'm gonna click publish okay I'm gonna copy the link you got to copy. It's, it's got to be this one. It has to be the published to the web link. And back in the spreadsheet in column B, pow. Look at that. It's right in there. I said to paste the, the published to the web link. Yes. What? By the way, did you yeah, to make a badge. the directions tab? Just so you know. Okay. So you are looking at your badge template. You're gonna do file, make a copy. And what badge are you making? What was my third one? Intro assignment. Intro badge, I don't know. Name, name it what you want. Literally doesn't matter. Okay, after you make a copy, use the paint can to change the color. I like gradients. Gradients are fun. Gradients are fun. I'm going to make it an orange gradient. And then I'm going to use my Bitmoji. Who saw that coming? Anyone? Shocking. And I'm going to... Drag my Bitmoji on there. Look at that. It's excellent. Yes. So I put a picture in there. Put some word art. Be as lame as you want to be.
okay? And then I'm gonna file, publish to the web. I'm gonna publish to the web. I'm gonna copy that link. I'm gonna copy that link. And in the spreadsheet, control V, paste the link into column B. Did you do it? It felt good, didn't it? Do we need to do something special to get it to pop, the picture to pop up in column C? No. If you accidentally deleted the formula, there's a formula in there, you can't see it. So if it doesn't show up, you probably accidentally leave the formula. So then what I do is I just go and I copy and paste the formula from one that is working. Just control C, copy, control V, paste. Okay. Okay, let's do it again because you're going to need to do a bunch of them. Now, you're going to be real glad soon that I have this badge library that you can grab out of column J because it's super fun to do these like 20 times. And then I'm tired and I start thinking this thumbs up one looks pretty dang good. And I'll take any badge. <laughs> All right, so back to my badge template. I'm going to file make a copy. File, make a copy. What was my next quest? Watch a YouTube video. YouTube badge. Now here's the trick, you guys. Insert image and search the web. Watch this trick. Type in T-Y-P-E colon clip art face movie and it only returns clip art. Instead of movie I put cats. It gives me clip art cats. So yeah I'm gonna do that. Look how good that looks. File all right, I'll show you, Kathy. Publish to the web. Publish. Copy the link. Paste it into column B. All right, now Kathy wants to have it be cuter. So I'm going to file, make a copy. What was my next one? Ask the teacher a question. Cool. Question badge. Kathy, what I do is I click on the circle and I do Control D duplicate. And under my paint can, I make it transparent. And then I make it instead of a black line, I make it a white line. And then I make it a dotted line. And I hold down the shift key, I hold down the shift key and I make it smaller. And then I get the red lines. What? Like that. And you might want to also make it a little skinnier. So just make sure you grab the outer one when you want to change the paint can. Okay. Last steps. You ready for the last steps? So what you've done on your spreadsheet is you've got all your badges in column B. 
And then you gotta click on the little tiny triangle and hide the sheet. You don't want them to see it. So that's important. So when I'm done, I hide the sheet. The directions, you can hide it or delete it. I mean, these are the directions on how to make the darn thing. So either hide it or delete it, because you don't, don't delete the badges when you need it. <laughs> Just so you know. Now the levels, I usually hide that one too. I usually hide the levels. If I want them to know the levels, I'll just copy and paste them because otherwise they'll make their own levels. You know, if you don't have additional resources, delete it. But if you do, put some on there. The, the badge display is real nice because it shows it all in one grid. You can print it. Now on the mark off, don't forget to uncheck all of them. Like you had to check them. First, you check them all. Check them all slowly. So you're checking for how fast they're leveling up, and you're checking, like, I like that badge. That's a good-looking badge. But before you give it to the kids, you got to clean it up. You got to uncheck them all. So you got to uncheck them all. And now you put this into Google Classroom with a copy per student. Is anybody not a Google Classroom user? Because then what you have to do is you got to go to the share button. You need to change it to anyone with a link. It's a viewer and done. So, right, anyone can view. And then you copy the link at the top and you change the end from slash edit to slash copy. And that will force a copy. You remember when I gave you the alicekill.com slash search drive? That's how I did it. So if you want to, if you don't have classroom and you want to force a copy, that's how you do it. Uh, Noreen, not really, because when you give them a copy, they're the owner, so you can't really lock anything down because you can't lock owners out. But let's be honest, they will do shenanigans. Will you agree on that? They will do shenanigans. Great. I have the master one. I highlight these four, control C, and when I open up the students ones, I control V, paste it into B1, boom, and replaces all the points. So if they just like, oh, this one's worth a thousand, like I'm that dumb, I can't stop them from doing it. They'll do that. They will. Well, whatever. I just paste, puts it back. So if you, if you think they have shenanigans, just copy paste from your original where you have all the actual ones. Okay? This is why I say I don't put like major assignments on here. I just put some fun things, stuff that, you know what, if they lied or cheated, I just... Whatever, I got better things to do with my day. And they do shenanigans. I'm like, eh. I mean, I, I check it and, and these things, but it, I do my major assignments separate from this, you know? Now, if you wanted to lock them out and keep them from doing shenanigans and these kinds of things, you can't use Google Classroom. I mean, you can, but you can't. So, because when you share it in Google Classroom, they become the owner. If you're the owner, then you can lock stuff. You know, I can right click. I can protect the range. The problem is the protected range, do not touch. Set the permissions. Only me. Sounds good. So, only I can edit those columns. But if you're the owner, you can't be locked out of your own document. You cannot, so that won't work if you make a copy where they're the owner. So if you want to, you'd have to make the copies for them, which means you want to learn how to code because you can like really fast code where it makes a copy per student. I'm doing a webinar, I think, next Sunday on how to do that. It says take a list of students and do stuff. So someone make me show this exact example. But it's real fast to code 100 copies per student. But if you were just real adamant about file, make a copy, and type each student's name and share it with them manually, you could do that too. 
You can see why I don't. Questions? We're done. Thank you so much, Alice. It was pretty cool that you came up with us right after I sent you a, um, I need to do choice boards. <laughs> funny, because I think I did it first. I think it was a coincidence. No, oh, funny, funny like that. <laughs> Thanks so much. But usually I do get my webinar things from people asking questions, so. But I think this one was a coincidence this time. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I think they're really fun to make. I hope you enjoy them. Absolutely. Thanks a lot. It was a great home. idea. Great idea. Thank, Thank you. you. Even when someone else makes them and they share it with you. <laughs> All right, night, you guys.